My name is David Mingay. Um, I'm a product lead and creative director at us two studios in London. My name is Rebecca van Dahl. I work for Anilo, and Anilo is a digital library um, for schools. My name is uh, Lawrence Anholt, and um, I'm a writer and an artist. I've been here for about four years now, and my background is actually in industrial design originally, making physical objects. Um, and I've been doing the digital side of things for about 15 years. We have just over 70 animated picture books and um, they're made especially for using classrooms on the whiteboards that the schools have these days. Uh, I trained originally as a, as a painter but I moved uh, probably 20, 28 or 29 years ago. I moved into children's books with my wife Catherine and we've done that ever since. So the series that I do, which is called the Anholtz Artist Series, um, there are ten books in the series and about half of them the artist is in copyright, Matisse, Picasso and Chagall, uh, and then the other half the artist is out of copyright, so Van Gogh, uh, Leonardo da Vinci and, and so on. So um, yeah, so that makes a difference. Us two are, you know, a very strong users of um, you know, stuff in public domain and you know whether that's code or imagery imagery so you know for example dice uses a lot of the you know, publicly available apis and service systems i think we've got about 12 or 14 different ones that are uh, plugged in some of them yeah are free some of them are open source some of them uh, you have to pay uh, amount but you know that's that's really important for us is to you know see what's out there first there's no point reinventing the wheel if you're developing a whole product so you know, we're pretty well versed at looking at the latest bleeding edge stuff and uh, but off, more often than not some of, this, some of this stuff is free to use as long as you give the right um, credit to the author and uh, you know, pass, that, pass that on. And so that's, that's massively important to us because it's not only dice but it's also client engagement so we make sure that clients are aware that we may use third party codes or other systems and as long as we give the right acknowledgement and we you know, make sure we applied it in the right way using public domain stuff like that where appropriate and where useful is, is, is very important. So we've got just over 70 stories and um, about 10% of them are based on um, characters and stories that are out of copyright and all the remaining stories we buy from publishers um, in the UK and also in Germany where our head office is based. The public domain stories um, that we do use um, are mainly fairy tales and classic tales uh, which suits us perfectly because uh, those stories are very much in demand in school and they're also in the UK curriculum. Uh, they are things like The Billy Goat's Gruff and um, Alice in Wonderland, uh, The Jungle Book. Well, the one, the one thing I can tell you uh, which is quite interesting is that some of the adaptations that have been of my books, uh, for example, there have been a few animations. There was a, a big um, uh, stage musical in Korea of my Van, Van Gogh book, uh, absolutely fantastic. And in those cases, the creative people behind it, the animators, the, um, the producers of the stage productions, did not want to go near the uh, Picasso or the Matisse uh, books because they just thought it would be way too difficult so they could quite freely get in there and and, and uh, produce a wonderful stage production about Van Gogh. Uh, it looked absolutely fantastic and they were completely free to do that. So so it has held me back in, in some ways uh, doing artists that uh, are in copyright. One thing that um, makes a big difference to, our, to us is how quickly can we take the story to market and um, well we haven't encountered any problems with our third party um, publishers. Of course it's, it's easier if you do not have to look, you know, spend the time on paperwork and negotiation and you can get going straight away on the animation and the selling of the story. So the first stories that we um, put in our library, those were the ones that are uh, out of copyright because it's uh, much quicker to, to get that to market and to make it available to schools. 
Well, the, the, the benefit of using out-of-copyright work is that you have complete freedom. It's something that's in the public domain. You have the freedom to use it as you want to, to reinvent it. And I think when something's out of copyright, then it becomes part of our sort of general cultural heritage, which is a, a wonderful thing. It's, it's something that we all take for granted. But any one of us, any creative person at any time is, is dipping into that great big pool of our cultural heritage. I think we're all influenced by what's gone in in the past. Nobody is completely uh, completely original uh, and so to be able to dip into that and and use ideas very freely is what artists do